Hello everyone, this is Jackson here coming to you from the cupboard under the stairs. This is the first game in what may be a long series of games against expert Scrabble players. This first game is against Kenji Matsumoto. He's from Reno, Nevada. He is widely known as one of the best strategists in the world. Uh, a good friend of mine, very cool dude. Uh, he's written a couple books about strategy. He's probably taught me the most about strategy from like out of anyone. So in this game, my goal is to make this more about word knowledge, more about word finding. I'd rather have a shootout against Kenji. I know he hates shootouts. Um, he wants to be locked in more of a tight battle. And I think he wins more of those. He wins too many of those. Uh, so immediately I have a bingo humanize, which isn't, I mean, it's not ideal. It puts the E in the triple triple, but you got to do it sometimes. Um, I have aneurysm, but that scores way worse. Aneurysm, and it still has a lot of, uh, it gives back scores of 8A. Aneurysm has got to be worse than humanize. Uh, I don't think there's anything from the F. Um, and I don't think there's a 7. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and play humanize. Yeah, I don't think there's a 7. A 7 would be nice from war, but I uh, don't think it's there. So I draw really well again. Uh, this is definitely what I want. I want to have an open board against Kenji. Uh, I've got my wish. The question is whether I have another bingo. This is a really good rack as well. Um, so far, I don't see anything, though. Aldo Lace is almost there, but not quite. Um, and I don't see anything else through the... I or the R or the M. Um, yeah, I'll probably be fishing if, uh, depending on what he plays, I'll probably be fishing the O and the D. Keeps a really strong lead. Um, o, D goes at, uh, at 6J for 14. I'm expecting him to play on the O column. That's definitely most likely. Uh, there's no reason he would open. He would leave that open unless he had to. Hmm. Yeah, the second D is really making things weird. I don't see any words, any bingos. I don't like soul landed. I find sometimes I just can't figure out what is and isn't a word. I just go through these phases of not knowing anything. I just played another game against Kenji and played a terrible phony. And missed a few bingos, so. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Kenji is also preparing for the Nationals this year in Reno. He's, uh, he's been training pretty hard. He's trying to get his word knowledge back to what it used to be. Uh, and I, I hope he plays a lot of Scrabble. I think you need to play Scrabble to practice and not just learn words. I think people trust themselves too much to just uh, be able to figure things out in the moment when it's actually really hard. Hmm, I wonder what's taking him so long. This is not a position that should be really challenging. It's probably technically challenging, like figuring out leads and figuring out different options to play. But it's not like Kenji to take so long on his first few moves. He usually plays the early game pretty quickly um and this is a position where it's very likely there's just gonna be one standout play so it makes me worried that he's looking for triple triples with the blank that would really suck hmm. interesting i guess he just had like no good options from the e Maybe all of his options through the E played his consonants. Auto looks pretty standard, though, because he's, uh, he's blocking a lot of things. So now I need to see if there's actually nines. There could be nines. The TI especially looks promising. Um, hmm. I don't recognize the rack, though. So that messed up my plan of fishing the D and the O. I can still do D-O up here. It's not ideal for a lot of reasons. Uh, it like it gives a lot of easy overlaps. So I could actually score a lot of points and block things up. Luckily, warps will still be open. Um, I might just do Edo. 
I score eight more points. The D definitely helps this rack in terms of bingo percentage, but Edo gives back a lot less. And I still have some pretty good sevens lanes, so I think I'm going to play Edo over um, Do. Hmm. I could do Od as well. I don't like Od because that blocks wharfs. I really want wharfs to stay open. It's not very easy to block wharfs, and most plays paralleling wharf will give up another S hook. So I think Edo is probably what I'm going to play. And I did not draw a seven. I think there's a Colin 7 in here, but I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. Oh, we just came down immediately. Interesting. So unless I have a bingo, this position is going to be hard. Hmm. So if EW is a word, because we're playing with the new words, um, but the only real possibility there that doesn't cue a bad leave is Rue, and that takes too many front hooks. Um, I'd be looking for words making za, but besides AE, I really want to be playing my U here. That's the real issue with this rack. I could do FEU. FEU is an intense fish because it makes another S hook. It keeps wharfs alive and it's harder to block wharfs. It's quite hard to block wharfs actually after FEU. So I would consider this. Hmm. It just scores so few points. I'd rather not. I like FEU more than Fuel. Fuel, it does make a slightly better S hook, but uh, the L really helps with my bingo percentage. Huh. I think I'm gonna play FEU. Uh, it's really hard to parallel to block the S hooks, so I think it's a pretty good fish, actually. <laughs> Especially if I draw a blank. I could have played whatever I wanted if I'm going to draw the blank. But this is obviously a good draw. It's worth noting, like, if I was up by a bit more, I wouldn't have wanted the fish. Um, I could have played something like SLUE if I was up by a lot more, just to be defensive and to score sure points. But I was only... The game was tied, so the only advantage I had was tempo. And... At this point, it's just not worth it. I think it's worth it to go more for uh, the higher valuation with FEU. Because I hit quite a lot. I probably hit at least half the time with AELRS. I suspect more like two-thirds, actually. Because it's because these Wharfs plays aren't really getting blocked. And I get some other plays, like the R. So it's worth noting, like, it would be nice to play downwards as much as possible because plays at 9b are just going to open like five different eights lanes uh so it'd be nice to play something down in collins you play lestra but that makes uh you are we can't do that um orlis solaras sorosol um just looking at all the play all the letters that go after the u that's what i'm going to check first like the H, Scholler, um, the N, Loners, Reloans. So it doesn't look like anything plays paralleling all of FEU. So, but I would settle for something like Orlis. Um, well, with the first S as a blank. Orlis, it, it does give back some points at 8A, but it's not so bad. And the main thing is that it gives one less floater for 8s. Just giving O-A-R-L is not so bad. Giving a fifth tile, especially as an E or something, would be gross. Hmm. I could also play from U-N. I want, there's probably something. Yeah, there's unloaders. Um, hmm. It's only 68, though. So it's an eight-point sacrifice. It's, it's one of those plays that looks more clothed than it is. I think since Warps is so unblockable, I mean, that's one of the issues about playing something like FEU. I'm really uh, cornering myself to play a word at 9B, or I'm cornering the board such that something is going to get played along the 9 column. Since it's so hard to block the hook, it kind of guarantees that this upper section of the board is going to get opened at some point, uh, which is good and bad. It's good short term for me because I have a really good rack that plays well there. But then uh, once I've played there, 
it's not as ideal. It's obviously better to uh, play a bingo and get your lead on a more closed board. If I play something like Unloaders, I mean, this is depending on what he plays. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I have Cajolers, and that's just what I'm going to play. That just uh, goes beyond whatever I was saying before. <laughs> board shaping doesn't matter when you're scoring 106 points. But yeah, it's worth noting that if he had played something else that didn't give me a 106-point bingo, something like Unloaders is not actually that closed because it leaves this big Wharf's hook that's really hard to block, and that just leaves the game up to whoever draws the S, and I don't want to do that if I have a lead. Whereas playing something like Orlis, it may be more open immediately. He may get more immediate bingos, but at least he, uh, but at least that Wharf's hook gets blocked immediately. So Troll looks like a pretty standard play. He's probably keeping a few low-scoring tiles, that uh that bingo pretty well so i do have the q it would be nice to hold on to my vowel with qi right there but there's definitely something to be said for blocking uh some of these lanes i could do quad i could do quant quant takes an a hook and back uh that's not so bad I don't really mind if he plays there, and it actually helps me more than helps him. The problem is once quant hooks get played, then they open this really big 13 row, and I don't want him to play quanta without me having a quanta hook, and that would be really bad. And uh, BDP also had its own issues, so I'm more inclined to play quad than quant, just to uh, get rid of that rare scenario when everything goes to shit. Um... Yeah, I think I pretty much have to play this. Blocking the R and the U, or like, and partially blocking the S, definitely good things to do. Um, and I think this is probably the way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and play quad. Hmm. So I drew pretty well. This is definitely a good draw. And I can definitely start to address the FEU S hook. The only thing right now is i mean one thing that's good is most of the board is centered around this bottom right and i want to be constricting everything so that this gets exhausted as quickly as possible the only thing the only issue with that is this t up here i would have much rather to have played something at b6 like a five letter word like that's not a word but something like that because it's really nice to play at b6 because that totally kills all three lanes right there it means that the left part of the board is also harder to access um, it's not really restricted, it's not really, or I guess it's re restricted, it's not exhausted though, so he could definitely play something like Pun to set up a big S-spot, and that's definitely an issue, and I would actually be willing to sacrifice something just to block that setup spot. I would be considering something like Bunt right here, because I really do not want it to let him make plays like Pun to set up an S. Luckily, I do have an S, and there's only one S after that, so as long as I don't play my S, I'm not worried about that. But I definitely don't mind blocking that opportunity just for later. In case I play my S somewhere for a lot of points, I'd rather not have that be an, be an issue. Because if he makes setups on, like, the G row, I don't know if he did Aggo or whatever, AGO, that can be blocked a lot more easily than these one-tile setups. So I'm really... I'd rather block those, for sure. But yeah, that's just to be said. This T up here at 8A is going to be really annoying. It's one of those things that is not easy to block, and it's also a pretty good lane. Um, it's not an amazing lane, and a lot of the words don't end in T. A lot of them will just go through the T for like 60 or 70. But I would much rather have them all not be there. It makes me wonder if some people would ever play QI just to leave that leave better blocks open. Because once I play quad, it's pretty impossible to block the T easily. Ontic. So the question is, what does Ontic take in front? This looks a lot like a setup. And I'm not seeing anything that it obviously takes. Which is kind of worrisome. Because why would he play this? It seems kind of odd. Maybe he's trying to set up a big hook. I don't even know what he's doing. Hmm. I'm, I guess he might just be trying to open the left side of the board because he realizes that once the T is gone, if it does get gone, it's going to be really hard to access, especially this lower left part. So now that the, a play at like 2J is going to be really restrictive. Um, so I'm going to consider something like Baton. Uh, Baton does take an A in front of the B, uh, but that's not so worrisome. It's not like taking an E in front. 
Paton also scores pretty well. Um, I think it's probably the, the play I should make. Unless I can play the P as well. But I don't see one. Playing the P would actually be fine. Because the P only takes the O and the U in front. That's probably slightly better. Uh, it's hard to... Actually, no, there's only O's left. There's four O's and two A's left. He also de like very likely has an O based on Ontic. So I'm actually more inclined to put the B there than the P. Usually I'd want to put the P because the O doesn't... Actually, it probably ends close to as many words as the A, if not more. Um, but I think right here the B is a better tile to put because there's only two A's left. Once again, that draws very well. <laughs> I don't see any bingos yet, but I'm sure there's something. Almost spyglass. Hmm. At the very least, I can block a lot. Okay, interesting. He's making the game interesting. Hmm. So right now the uh, thought is just to look for as many bingos as possible. So far I don't see any. Looking mainly through the E and through the T. Those are basically the two lanes to work with. So I'll just be going through the alphabet at this point and seeing if there's anything. I'm not seeing anything. It'd be nice to spend a few minutes on this usually. I can also play words at H10. I don't think Gypsy can be spelled with an E, otherwise that would be a nice play. Uh, it doesn't. It's not nice to open the board, but it still scores very well. So I could also do G L E Y. I think that does take an S. Um, the question is whether that's a good thing. I could do G-E-Y as well. G-E-Y doesn't take an S. And you might think that since I have an S and a blank, I definitely want there to be an S hook. But uh, my prospects are still pretty good right here. So I don't mind not leaving that rare case open where he has an S and bingos. He has an S 7 out of 38, uh, which is honestly pretty good. Just a bit worse than 20%. I don't know if I want to risk that with G-L-E-Y. Uh, G-E-Y is also good because my leave works really well with the T, so I just hit the T so much, and once I hit the T, it's pretty much game over. Um, see if I can see why. I'm just trying to make sure there's nothing through the T. I definitely could be missing something. Um, I think is probably what I'm going to play. I don't think I want to play Spy, SPY. Uh, kind of like if he makes an S setup, I want to be able to counter it and use it. So I'm going to play GUI. And yeah, I, I draw really well. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I bingo like 80% or something after GUI. It's really only the big problem tiles, like drawing two heavy consonants would be really bad. Um, so now ideally I'll be bingoing from the T. I don't really want to bingo to the T because that's going to open the left side more than it's already opened. So I'd rather be go from the T going rightwards, but I don't see anything there yet. Um, I, O, U. Hmm. Yeah, there might just be nothing from the T, which would be annoying. <laughs> um, I also have pre-sale on column A. I'm probably just playing that. I, it definitely still live, leaves uh, two column bingos open. But that's going to get blocked really quickly. Probably not by him, but more likely by me. That takes out the two column and also the dangerous A row stuff. Basically, after pre-sale, two, two B plays are going to make the whole board be on the right side. Um, I don't really have anything that goes there, which is kind of annoying. I'd rather have something. I really want to have something at 2B. If I had, like, Reggie, if I had another E, 
I would definitely be playing that. Luckily, I'm in a position to be outranked two bingos. Um, and that's definitely the position you want to be in when you, when you have the opportunity to restrict the board to one portion. It's really nice when you're up by two bingos and you have the ability to do that. Right now, the main way I can lose is him bingoing on the left side, and then it's hard for me to address the right side. Um, so, yeah. Because if, if I block the left side of the board, it's really unlikely he could get two bingos down on the right side. Most of the time, once he gets one bingo down, I can make a play such that the rest of it's exhausted. So, once you're up by like two bingos, you definitely want to be... Um, restricting quadrants as much as possible he clowns a nice play um i'm still not totally convinced that i have no plays at 2b i would be willing to oh g-r-i-s-e i think g-r-i-s-e-e -E is a word i'm definitely willing to play this if it's a word the problem is if it's not a word that's really bad i'm pretty sure it's a word though Yeah, I like it better than playing Gib. I still outrun bingos a lot, but Gib only blocks the two column. And, you know, the two column is really not that worrisome. It's pretty much only IED and IER that go there. Uh, he just drew five tiles. Luckily, the right side is actually still pretty closed. Um, I don't have a play that blocks the two column and the T. That's the other thing. I think I'm going to play G-R-I-S-E. I th if it's not a word, so be it. But I think it's good. Hmm. I think I didn't really consider the opportunity of the X right here on the H row. That would have been good to consider because X plays there, like fixing. They score a bingo score. And that could actually lead to a loss. So I should have considered last turn... Uh, I'm not sure what. Not GI. GI still would have been kind of gross because that leaves a lot of options. But I should have considered something that blocks that spot. Okay, so we didn't challenge GRISE, so it is good. Or it probably is. Uh, so now my only real job is to try to restrict the right side. Um, I think I have to block the T at this point. There's eight tiles in the bag. He can only get one bingo down after my play. And as long as I block the T, those are kind of like the most worrisome lanes. Uh, I think if I play fix it, that should be that should be enough. Uh, there's no immediate bingos he can have besides the really, really rare nine. So he has to open the board and then bingo. And I think I'm going to run all of that to fix it. I think mothing is a word. If he opens up a spot for it, I'll play mothing. Yeah, it looks like he just gave up, basically. Uh, I'll play the timing. We can just sort of get it over with now. It was very nice to draw controllers. That was pretty much the game. And drawing the second blank. But yeah, it's interesting. Plays like G-E-Y, unless I missed a bingo, I really wonder what other people would have done. Um, I know in my city, in Toronto, I think there's a big tendency for people to set up their S and their blank only based on their rack and not based on the score. But my tendency is to play very defensively with the S and the blank in hand when I have a lead. Because holding the S and the blank on a closed board are really good because you deal with the opponent's setups really well. And you're also in a really commanding position because you have these powerful tiles. Um, so... When you have these powerful tiles with the lead, you don't really need to take the risk of opening a hook that your opponent could have 10-20% of the time. Uh, so, thanks for watching the first expert strategy game in what might be a series of many. Take care.